Hello everyone, welcome to Curiosity, September 2024, a monthly roundup of curiosity driven scientific stories all around the world. So as usual, uh, let us start this episode. This is the episode number 59 uh, with etymology of the, the word September. It's coming from septum, septum in Latin, which comes from right here in India, you know, any guess? Yeah, sapta, right? Sapta in uh, Sanskrit is seven, number seven, uh, that is septum in Latin. So it's the, the Sanskrit belongs to, and also Latin and most of the European languages, right? It belongs to a giant family tree of languages called Indo-European or Indo-Aryan. Right, so yeah, that is why September. By the way, why number seven for September? It is ninth month right now, isn't it? But it used to be seventh month when the month was just ten months long. The year was just ten months long during the BC time, the Roman era. You know, the, during those days it was just ten. So later, two more months got added on. So that is why it is September, right? The origin is from Sapta. Uh, so as October, November, December, all these have a Sanskrit roots, you know, Ashta, Nava, and Dasha. And September is equinox month. We are all looking forward, isn't it? So equinox is very important day. We will come to that in a short while, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. So September equinox is the day of, um, you know, autumn for the northern hemisphere. Uh, the the viewers from the northern hemisphere, it's gonna be autumn for all of us, right? And the first sunrise in uh, South Pole in Antarctic and for sun, su sunset, first and only sunset in, in the Arctic is also in September, right? So 21st of September. And as for florigraphy, September is a month of three flowers. Forget me not, that is meiosis, meiosotis, that is a genus name of it. And then aster, then morning glory, ipomia, right? So all these flowers of the month is September. So as usual, we'll see the what really moved the world of sciences, right? The roundup of the science-related stories in the last month. Chandrayaans, you might remember that um, we made a history, right? India became first country in the whole world to land somewhere near the south pole of the, the moon. Isn't it lunar south pole? Which is not really the south pole, around 2,000 kilometers, but still we are the closest one. And also this is the other side of the moon, right? The far side of the moon, which is not visible for us. And it landed in a place called uh, Stasio Shiv Shakti, isn't it? And the rover is Pragyan Rover. Now, Pragyan Rover, it, it, it actually, uh, you know, it operated just 15 days before it went to sleep forever. But that 15 days was sufficient to meet the mission objective, the scientific objective of that mission. So that rover was equipped with a, a very important a measurement. Uh, equipment and the equipment is known as APXS that is Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrophotometer right so this equipment they uh, relayed the signal to see the mineral composition of the rock material of that moon at that spot so now the last week a new paper got published in Nature by Indian authors so it is very difficult for an Indian author to get saw paper in Nature so the paper comes from PRL, a physical research lab in Ahmedabad, a very prestigious lab for physics enthusiasts. And the paper, uh, the first author is Santosh V. Vadavale. So congratulations, Santosh, for this great paper. So the, the paper is all about what they found, the discovery which they made, that they found a rock type called ferroran anorthosite. So this particular thing, anorthosite ferroran is a very common rock in here in earth on earth you know so it is again it's reported in moon also it is not a new discovery but this finding in the other side of the moon says that at one point of time the entire moon was an ocean of magma you know so you might remember how the moon got originated just after earth was formed a, an earth-sized planet the so-called Thea impacted the earth so that a, a chunk of earth got ejected into the space and that chunk later became moon that is a prevailing hypothesis so moon is basically moon comprises of rocks of here on the planet earth so the impact 
might have uh, resulted in a crater. Yeah, that the giant crater resultant of that impact is what we now call as Pacific Ocean. You know, pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, this, the next story is from Olympics. Olympics recently concluded the Summer Olympics in Paris. And while Paralympics just started in Paris, I'm equally looking forward to it, you know. So, yeah, society has to be inclusive, right? Everyone has equal rights. So, by the way, the last Olympics had been the hottest in the history of Olympics. So, just like in Curiosity, every new episode, the, you know, the, the hottest month record, it keep on breaking as featured in this channel, isn't it? So, it has been hottest uh, Olympics with temperature as high as 34 degrees Celsius with 70% relative humidity. Uh, in Paris, you see 34 is kind of abnormal, but with 70% humidity means the feel like temperature is approximately 47 degrees Celsius. Can you believe it? Really hot. And um, yeah, that all these are ramifications of the climate change, isn't it? Uh, personally speaking, Paris Olympics had been the greatest Olympics as per my opinion. Do you know why? Because of the sustainability measures that the Olympic organizers in Paris, the French organizers have adopted so many measures. For example, the food they serve is all seasonal fruits. There is no exotic fruits or exotic stuff in it. And mostly vegetarian because the carbon footprint of vegetarian uh, food is much lower than non-vegetarian. And even the way they uh, air conditioned the, the, the Olympics village is not by using air conditioners but by using recirculation of the water from approximately 80 meters underground. That's a very interesting method, isn't it? And also lots of public transportation is part of this uh, thing, not much of the car, you know? So that all these are, uh, yeah, all these sustainability measures are, uh, you know, that signals a very strong, uh, you know, uh, message that planet Earth the Mother Earth, you know, belongs to all of us. It's a collective duty of all the humanity to save this planet from the catastrophe, isn't it? So yeah, that is, that's my take on the Paris Olympics. Well, next story is also about the global warming. If the news is coming from Australia, the northeastern Australian coast the, near Darwin, uh, well, we have something called Great Barrier Reef, right? The biggest, uh, you know, uh, coral reef ecosystem in the world, the tropical rainforest, isn't it, of the ocean. The latest paper is alarming that this location of the Great Barrier Reef, um, they detected the hottest ocean temperature in the last 400 years. As you might know, the coral reef is basically a symbiotic system of animal which is nidarian and plant which is algae so algae the so-called symbiodinium or dinoflagellate or zooxanthellae so many names which is the only photosynthetic partner and which is highly susceptible to the temperature as well as acidity ocean acidification is a big problem now as the temperature rises this algae dies and that leads to bleaching you know instead of seeing that in technique color when you dive in uh, the, the great barrier reef you will see in monochromatic gray and later it becomes complete white the so-called coral bleaching well hope it recovers but yeah this is an alarming news coming from the last month and this has been published in nature again the second story in nature featured in this episodes of the curiosity next story is about heart attack one of the overlooked uh, measurement for a, a predicting factor, a causative factor for the heart, heart attack is diurnal temperature fluctuation. So those regions with max temperature and mean temperature in on one day is extreme. Like uh, here in Batinda where I speak from, right? Early uh, days of summer, we have seen that. The, the lowest temperature is around, around 10 degrees Celsius, while highest temperature is around 40, 42 degrees. Yeah, that's a huge fluctuation. That is one of the major risk factor for development of stroke as well as a heart disease as for the new paper. You know, you can check out uh, the, the analysis, the entire paper in the show notes, okay? 
Now the fifth story, oh, by the way, when I was reading this, I was just thinking, well, that is about the diurnal fluctuation. How about those people who are in an AC room uh, at, let us say, 28 degrees and you get out immediately, it is around 40 plus. So that is also a risk factor, isn't it? Like you are, you are in a car, 42 de uh, 22 degrees in your car temperature and when you get out of the car, or walking on a street, suddenly the temperature is 48 degrees. Yeah. So we have to be cautious about all these extreme temperature fluctuations, you know. So that is, yeah, it's a predictive factor for the ischemic heart disease. Next is also about heart disease constipation as a, a very important or overlooked factor for heart attack. So constipation increases the risk of heart attack as per the new study. And the study is pretty convincing, published in a journal called American Journal of Physiology, a very a good journal. And uh, it's a large number study to 23,814 cohorts. And the odds ratio is 2.15. That means there's a very good correlation, a strong correlation. Anything more than one order odds ratio is considered to be good. Now it is 2.15 means more than 100 percentage is a risk factor. So the constipation, if you have this problem, um, yeah, you have to be a little bit cautious about you know, the, the risk of heart attack is a little bit higher. You know? Just be cautious. Next story is about chocolates. Well, who don't like chocolate, isn't it? You might know how the chocolate is being manufactured, isn't it? That is coming from bean, just like coffee, you know. And uh, yeah, cacao, isn't it? The, uh, it is called Theobroma cacao is a plant. So cocoa plant, right? So the, the species name or specific epithet is cacao, yeah? It is the native to Amazonian rainforest, but it's now cultivated everywhere uh, in the tropical region, especially in Africa as well as in, in Asia, in Indonesia, for example, one of the largest exporter, right? Ivory Coast is, as per my understanding, is the number one exporter of the coffee beans. I mean, uh, the chocolate beans, no? cocoa beans. Well, you harvest this cocoa, uh, you know, this um, the fruit, and most of the fruit is thrown out. Right. Only the bean which is being uh, fermented, then roasted, then ground and cured and finally mixed with sugar right, and diary to make uh, chocolates like Lidl in, in Switzerland. Now this new paper comes from the epicenter of chocolate, the Switzerland, ET at Zurich. Uh, you know it is one of the very prestigious institute in the Switzerland. right? And this particular paper argues that well fruit is equally good. You know, this cocoa plant fruit, you can make a first class chocolate from the fruit. So don't throw away. You know, it's a, it's a highly sustainable measure, isn't it? Something which farmers are simply throwing away. Now, they can find a use of it to make uh, equally good chocolate. That is pretty interesting. The paper is coming from Kim Mishra. So from the uh, surname Mishra, I suspect that he is having Indian roots. Maybe he is a second generation or third generation Indian. Right. So, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting story. By the way, this chocolate is now going to be more expensive than, um, you know, the bean based chocolate. Do you know why? So if you see the chocolate that you purchase from the market is the cocoa is very, very less. It's only for to give that taste. If they're adding it. Mostly it is sugar, you know. So the sugar is already too much subsidized in the world. Isn't it? That's why the chocolate is pretty inexpensive but those new chocolate which is using these fruits are going to be more expensive because there is no subsidy for the the fruits isn't it but it's going to be much more healthier and also sustainable i would say well next story is about uh, a new launch here in india uh, yeah one thing which we feature in curiosity often is about the space junk problem isn't it so much of the space junk even the last time we featured a news about a, a chinese a satellite breaking into more than 300 pieces right even russian one broke into more than 80 pieces recently and yeah one of the issue with the space junk is that the satellites are not reusable even rockets are not reusable india launches a new rocket called rumi r h u m i 1 which is completely reusable that concept i really like it reusable hybrid rocket successfully launched somewhere near chennai the place is called uh, tiruvidanthai near kelambakam near chennai near near the easier road right very near to mahabalipuram and yeah this 
launch is not by isro but by a private venture it is a startup chennai based startup called space zone india uh, with support from martin group i never heard these names before but yeah, i'm really excited about this it is reusable it is again a sustainability measure right a strong message on the sustainability kudos to the team it's a, it's a great news next is the cover image of the curiosity the last meal of crocodile mummified 3000 years back has recently got revealed in an exciting ct scan you know so yeah well yeah the ancient egyptians they mummify you know something which they they revere they worship you know like their pharaohs and important people and even animals like cat bast my surname is adopted from the goddess of cats you see so bastet or bast isn't it so re latest scan is coming from a mummy preserved in uh, you know birmingham natural history museum well the work was done in manchester's children's hospital you know it's a hospital ct scan very interesting right and what did they find in their scan it revealed this crocodile uh, mummy it revealed that it had a hook uh, it also have several stone called gastrolith and also a fish so uh, yeah the 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 authors presume that the hook is you know remnant of the fisherman who caught the crocodile from the river nile you know and hook has uh, yeah the fish as a bait so that the crocodile eat that uh, you know that fish and in turn they get trapped into the hook isn't it and also what is gastrolith these are stone and yeah crocodile uh, eat this stone to aid in grinding like mastication you know chewing that we do a crocodile cannot chew it they they just eat this uh, rock little bit rock when i was in antarctica also i was pretty curious why penguins like small pebble and small rock they eat it for the same reason gastrolith to aid in uh, the digestion have you heard of it penguin eat pebble and stone yeah so that is what why you need to watch this curiosity uh, you know science program isn't it so yeah that is that's very interesting and by the way why crocodile sobek that is a lord of nile you know the god were uh, this kemeticist right this ancient kemet uh, the ancient egyptians worshiped the lord of nile as sobek so that's the reason why they mummified it pretty exciting isn't it next story scientists find humans age dramatically in two bursts at 44 years and then at 60 it's not a linear aging pattern but at 44 aging has remarkably increased and then at 60 years not that convincing not because i'm 44 years but because this is uh, the n is less 108 cohorts only so it's a it's a small number study might not be true but still I really like it because they, they looked at methylation patterns of the genes associated with aging. So me, attachment of methyl group into the genes, uh, rather transcription factors of the gene that controls expression level that is called epigenetics. They were looking at this pattern and they saw that, uh, you know, these are uh, the methylation patterns are, are, are drastically or substantially changed when the people are at 44 years or at 60 years. That's very interesting, right? So at 44th year, so usually genes involved in caffeine and alcohol me metabolism are affected. Then in the second wave, that is at 60 years, immune regulation and carbohydrate metabolism as well as kidney functions are affected. So yeah, kidney got to be very careful after 60 years. Yeah. Next story about sugar, eating sugar and aging. Again, a story related with the aging. Eating too much refined sugar may accelerate cellular aging. That's that's a very interesting, uh, you know, study. Again, about something to do with the um, methylation patterns of the middle-aged women. The study looked at the methylation pattern and how the sugar consumption leads to changes in the methylation pattern. You know, pretty interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. Next story is the transparent sea creature can age in reverse. You know from 42 going back in time how possible how exciting the news is right yeah well it's not for the first time this news is about sea walnut you know so yeah it's a it's a marine creature 
uh, yeah but well it's a third animal ever ha uh, detected having this ability so it's about fragmentation uh, a little bit piece of its tissue can regenerate the whole body it's an amazing piece of re cellular regeneration isn't it and yeah so it is yeah it's uh, we are doing active actively working on this for the human beings to the so-called stem cell therapy right so yeah embryonic stem cell have this kind of potential for regeneration but not to this extent though right so it's it's a pretty interesting paper next is a new alarming emerging disease mpox world health organization declares mpox has global health emergency international health concern so what is this mpox earlier it used to be called monkeypox it's a contact disease you know so not like airborne like in the case of covid 19 it is an airborne right by sneeze and respiratory mode of infection this is contact by touch or using the equipment sharing the same utensils or by sex you know yeah it's an std too right so yeah this uh, m pox by the way is uh, caused by mpx virus which is an ortho mixoviridae right or pox pox viridae ortho pox virus subfamily of pox viridae same family in which the chicken pox and small pox are in it's a double stranded dna virus just like i mean in the case of covid 19 sars cov 2 was single stranded rna and that strand was positive strand so this is a double stranded dna virus and well how to prevent it we have vaccines yeah science have already come up with the vaccines like genius vaccine and in vanity vaccine not in vanity in vanity i m v a n i t y the two vaccines are already in the market so yeah and also minimize the close contact including sex right with suspected uh, yeah this one right or increasing the partners all these are uh, some of the logical measures to curtail this mpox uh, disease well fortunately here in india as per my understanding no cases reported yet but in our nearby country pakistan yeah there is uh, one case well coming to vaccine there is an exciting news bharat biotech unveils a new oral cholera vaccine developed in a partnership with hilliman lab so pretty exciting because cholera is well india is not a number one cholera affected country in the world no there are much more worse country but still yeah it takes sense it makes sense to be careful while traveling and while eating in some places with shady uh, reputation like street food or uh, uh, you know having water uh, from contaminated sources right so yeah so for travelers cholera vaccine is recommended not for everyone though right frequent travelers yeah i'm pretty excited about this new vaccine so i'm considering to get this vaccine right by the way i have i already took the vaccines for typhoid as well as hepatitis b and also for uh you know this uh, influ vac that is for annual influenza so anyone can take it right you can yeah prevention is better than cure isn't it so next vaccine is for dengue or dengue alternative way of pronunciation right so it's a neglected tropical disease that the global north is not spending money on right because they don't have that problem with the dengue uh, fever so the global south you know less fortunate people like us are uh, being suffered because of this issue you know so yeah that is uh, uh, yeah it's pretty exciting it's not the vaccine is not yet out but first ever phase 3 clinical trial just got initiated in india it's an icmr clinical trial a large number group 10000 is a cohort size from 18 states can you believe it that's amazing isn't it now next story is about um, a blood detection for colorectal cancer approved by fda so it is already in the market in the united states right a simple blood test can detect whether you have colorectal cancer or not right now you need a colonoscopy right that is basically inserting an endoscope with a camera and light led light and scanning all your colon so that your gastroenterologist can see uh, lesions the traces of lesions to predict your risk right so well this is a very interesting it's a blood based i'm a big fan of this kind of a blood based check last episode we saw about alzheimer's disease right an inexpensive blood test to detect alzheimer's disease yeah 
that is a future of medicine friends right something to be excited about right yeah next story is about um, uh, asteroid impact you might know about kt extension event right a very important a very famous extension event event a cretaceous tertiary k stands for cretaceous is a german word k right cretaceous in germany starts with k well kt extension event the ramification is complete decimation of dinosaurs and almost 70 percentage of the biodiversity here on planet earth right so what caused it an asteroid impact in yucatan peninsula chicxulub crater impact crater in yucatan in mexico right off mexico it's a gulf of mexico right in on the in the in the ocean right so this impacted well remnants are felt all around the world if you dig it right cretaceous layer and ter, you know tertiary layer right kt right cretaceous is bottom because it's old then tertiary but in between you will see a, a thin layer of kt extension layer uh, you know uh, event no biodiversity is complete it's just a, a white layer so if you look at the traces of this layer the new paper says that the origin of the asteroid is beyond uh, you know uh, jupiter planet jupiter it's pretty interesting where, where from where exactly this rock piece the asteroid came from that is exciting isn't it yeah that is yeah that is a pretty interesting story of the the last month so yeah it is published in a uh, journal science you know it's uh, published by AAAS, american association for the advancement of science right yeah by the way jupiter is a very massive planet you know so many times of earth right and yeah it's almost like the the sun isn't it it's like a mini mini star mini sun and thanks to jupiter we are not getting many of the the asteroid impacts because jupiter is preventing it it actually uh, because of its mass most of the asteroids jupiter eats away from us right thanks to jupiter right we all have to be thankful to that giant planet isn't it pretty interesting next story is about dementia is preventable you know almost 50 cases 50 percentage of the dementia cases around the world are preventable by lifestyle measures in last episode of curiosity we were discussing about cancer right 50 percentage of the cancer are preventable we discussed you can check out the that show what are the uh, you know uh, measures to be taken care of and now this one is about 14 possible risk factors and if you curtail all 14 then you the chance of developing dementia is substantially reduced later in life and what, what i really like about this one is that they actually stratified these 14 risk factors based on uh, the population's age so in early life the most important risk factor is schooling so if you complete the schooling chances of developing dementia later is so much less how about for middle ages the risk factors are addressing hearing loss in case you have this hearing loss no problem but address it treat it right? untreated hearing loss is a huge risk factor for development of uh, dementia later in life and also high ldl cholesterol so as a simple blood workup can reveal your propensity for developing dementia later in life so ldl cholesterol if you have it control it yeah statins are available in the market well you know there are other but uh, you know ways to control the ldl cholesterols too depression traumatic brain injury like uh, you know riding a bike without a helmet that is a risk factor isn't it physical inactivity that means exercise is a great measure to prevent dementia diabetes untreated diabetes is a great risk factor smoking hypertension high blood pressure obesity and excessive alcohol consumption all these are uh, you know risk factors in middle ages and now later in the life reducing social isolation air pollution right and vision loss untreated vision loss all these are the you know the risk factors of uh, dementia uh, preventable lifestyle risk factors for the dementia 50 percentage can be controlled fantastic right 18 story huge underground reservoir of liquid water has been discovered in the mars the planet mars the paper comes in pnas another prestigious journal proceedings of national academy of sciences usa 
So this is uh, the uh, you know seismic data or uh, about the rover called InSight lander. You know, so well Perseverance rover is also very um, uh, common. I mean, it's a very famous one in NASA. But this one is coming from NASA's another lander called InSight. Okay, it has seism seismic equipment. Now the data suggests that there is a huge reservoir of liquid water on the planet Mars. That is fantastic news, right? Uh, the planet-wide liquid water. So wherever you dig, you can find liquid water. But how long you have to dig, how deep you have to dig, that is a catch. 11 kilometers to 20 kilometers. So digging by, uh, the, you know, the, the future missions to Mars is almost impossible, right? To dig that deep here on planet Earth is also impossible, right? 11 kilometers, come on, how is it possible? But still, it's pretty exciting news. Next story is about um, origin of life here on planet Earth, right? So, well, during the Middle Ages, during the Abrahamic religion, right? Uh, even the Genesis part of the Bible say, well, it's pretty new. It's only around 6,000 years old, you know? And, uh, yeah, the creation myth, isn't it? So, the whole diversity on planet Earth was created consciously by God in a span of one week. Noah's Ark, you know, right? Then later, it, science emerged and the latest figure till the last two months back used to be 3.9 billion years. Right? 3.9 billion years. Not anymore. There is a latest paper published last week in Nature, Ecology and Evolution. And the paper is about time calibrated phylogeny. They were looking at the current diversity and they calibrated the branch that is basically you know how many mutations are happening in each branch so if you count the mutations per year you can go back in time in which the center giant tree of life where exactly it is uh, meeting like bacteria and human being where exactly we are meeting together and from where exactly the life originated the root is called luca last universal common ancestor so if you look at that time calibrated phylogeny with calibration checkpoints as all the famous fossils of the world, this study concludes that Luca existed 4.2 billion years back, almost immediately after the earth was formed, 4.8 billion, 4.5 billion, isn't it? 4.54 billion years is when the entire solar system, other planets, including us, ours, formed, right? So just after that, in Hadean, Hadean is super hot, isn't it? Ionizing, um, you know, uh, atmosphere. And those are conducive conditions for abiogenesis, the origin of life, you know. So, yeah, the latest um, estimate is 4.2 billion years. Textbooks will not tell you that, right? You need to stay abreast with what is happening in the world of science. So, that is why, yeah, we have to read beyond our textbook. And to watch good, uh, you know, good uh, science-related uh, shows like this. Yeah. Now, final story of this month's episode of Curiosity is the brain. How do the brain store memory in uh, an organ called hippocampus? I'm sure most of you know about hip hippocampus, right? Yeah, that is involved with the memory. And a memory consolidation happens throughout the brain, but storage happens in Hippocampus. Now, the new story, uh, it's an article published in Science, the same journal, is that we are storing three copies of every memory. It's like backup. You know, when you go for a vacation, you come back from the vacation. So, usually you store the photos and videos in at least two, three locations, isn't it? Like a Dropbox or, um, you know, OneDrive. Both I use, you know, I'm pretty uh, into this Dropbox and OneDrive. So, well, both have got its own plus and minus, right? So, that's why I use a combination of both. And also an HDD, right? So, yeah, we are doing this multiple places backing up because redundancy means robustness, right? If one goes off, there is another. So, that is the same thing that we, the brain also uses. So, three copies of every single memory. Well, the story is in a mouse model, but it could be very well applicable for human beings too. We have to... Uh, wait and watch it well by the way please check the show notes for all the links of these articles and also we do have a facebook group where our volunteers share 
many more exciting curiosity driven stories like this now coming to the next part of curiosity's observances for the month of september fifth is the best day to watch mercury the greatest elongation on the in the morning right the the, the morning star mercury right the best day of the year is 5th of september 7th is clean air for blue skies right so air pollution is extremely um, uh, you know extremely bad the ramifications are every aspect of human life in this episode also we have seen that even for dementia right? so almost every episode we talk about air pollution so 7th is a day against air pollution clean air for blue skies so well it's a proxy for detecting is the air is clean or not right is the is the aqi levels are less or not you can just look at the sky so if you see blue sky it's pretty good you don't really have to have any app or connect to the internet or any sensors so it's a good proxy so yeah the, the, the day number uh, I mean, september 7 is against the air pollution yeah eight is literacy day again literacy right the, the early childhood schooling is a, a is an important factor influencing the, the later uh, you know uh, risk of dementia you can c control the dementia by education and also the uh, ensuring adult literacy right so yeah and also eighth is good day to watch saturn the best day of the year ninth is to protect education from attack so anywhere the war and attacks are being happening never ever target educational institutions you know that is the spirit of humanity isn't it and on the same day is the epsilon perside meteor shower annual meteor shower called epsilon perside is going to happen on 9th so those lucky people who are watching this show from high altitude places or anywhere where the the, the skies are blue the air pollution is less you can watch this annual perside meteor shower the epsilon meteor pit uh, meteor shower okay 15th is democracy day world democracy day 16th is the day uh, for ozone you know uh, yeah to sensitize the people against the uh, yeah causative agents of ozone hall right post montreal protocol the ozone hall reduced but now it has started expanding once again because of certain countries are leasing the the you know chlorofluorocarbons right cfcs so yeah many things we can uh, 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 you know we can do by changing our lifestyle for example if you want to buy a fridge or air conditioning unit look at its refrigerant right so yeah anything with which has cfc please don't do it right that that has an impact on the ozone layer 17 of september is moon saturn conjunction a few conjunctions are also coming up in this month and 18th is the full moon of September, the harvest moon. And guess what? It is a super moon. There are only two super moon in 2024. The first one is September. August was not a super moon. Many re media reported it is super moon, but it's pretty close to what can be considered as super moon, but it's not up to that super moon mark. But September is a super moon. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's called harvest moon as per the American Almanac. And the next one, the October is also 17th. October moon is also going to be going to be a super moon, the hunter's moon. You know, 21st is World Peace Day, while 22nd is September equinox, equal day and night, right? And here in Northern Hemisphere, yeah, after such a scorching summer, yeah, we are entering into autumn. You know, and down south, like in uh, you know antarctic or australia or you know south africa or south america they are entering into spring from winter right so yeah september is full of hope isn't it so yes it's it's a great observance 24th is another conjunction moon jupiter and the next day 25 or so moon mars conjunction 27th is another meteor shower called daytime saxtonid meteor shower you can see that around five o'clock four o'clock or five o'clock in uh, here in india you know early morning on 27th 28th is universal access to information day just like our rti act right right to information many countries in the world have this uh, uh, you know uh, act to ensure access to the information right so yeah this is an awareness for that 
Now, 29th is awareness for food loss and waste. Yeah, food loss, creating awareness is an important stepping point for ensuring food safety and food security, right? Uh, yeah, that is, uh, on the other hand, that is a step towards achieving zero hunger, uh, one of the very important SDG, Sustainable Developmental Goal of the UN, right? The World Hunger Crisis, how to address this? Address, address it. Final section of curiosity is about opportunities for the um, students and young scientists and researchers all around the world, right? HFSP call is now open, 2025 call, right? 2025. HSFP is International Human Frontier Science Program. It is interdisciplinary program. You can apply for it. MCSA, Mary Slovakia Curie Funding for Global Postdoc Corps. If you want to go to the EU, European Union for postdoc, you can apply. 11th September is the deadline. Call for applications for the International Atomic Energy Agency's Marie Curie Fellowship Program for providing scholarship to young women studying towards master's degree in nuclear-related subjects is open now. 30th September is the deadline. So if you are a physics student and if you are a, a, a girl, a woman, you can apply for this program. Okay, so this is a, a, a special call under Mary Curie Fellowship. DAD scheme is open now. DAD, D A A D, right? It's a, it's a, a prestigious German, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a scheme, right, for the exchange program for the doctorate students. So if you are a doctorate student anywhere in the world, if you want to do a part of your doctorate program in Germany, you can apply for it. Twenty first October is a deadline. Call for applications for 2025 organ Organization for Women in Science for Developing World. Elsevier Foundation Award in the area of inclusive health is open now. 16 September is the deadline. So if you are a woman and also from developing country like here in India or anywhere in the global south, you can apply for it. It is by Elsevier. It's a scientific publication, publishing firm from Netherlands, isn't it? Yeah. Please apply for it, right? Next is Agarwal Prize for Young Scholars in Ecological Economics. A very interesting topic, Ecological Economics. Economics and ecology are pretty related. How many of you are aware of it? For example, there is a, there is a uh, you know, there is a mental model in economics, a very famous model called Portfolio Effect. So if you have in your personal portfolio, the personal finance, or mutual fund portfolio, whatever, the wealth portfolio, it makes sense to diversify. Don't put all eggs in the same basket, right? You just diversify. For example, a little bit on equity, a little bit on debt, a little bit on real estate or gold like gilt, right? A gilt like gold rather. And um, yeah, very safe investments like um, uh, bond, isn't it? So diversification is very important for economics. Same for ecology too. Portfolio effect is an ecological concept too. So habitats with more diversified, lots of diversity, biodiversity is very rich. If that kind of habitat, if you compare with another habitat where biodiversity is very poor, like a monocrop, like a paddy field where biodiversity is extremely low, right? So that habitat with high biodiversity, that is well diversified portfolio, is more resilient for damages like wildfire it can uh, it can easily come back to the normal stage right the, there's a robustness and resilience involved with the portfolio that is that's pretty interesting maybe uh, this indian origin economist agarwal the surname is a champion of this field ecological economics maybe i'm not sure but yeah pretty interesting call and another call is coming from International Union for Quaternary Research. Quaternary Research is a very important point of geological research for the uninformed. And yeah, there is a, there, there's a new call by this Quaternary Research Fellowship Program. This is to support early career scientists and scientists from low and middle income countries, including India, to gain international quaternary research experience at a foreign institution for up to th six months, three to six months. Deadline is 15 September. Please check the show notes for all the links of every single opportunities and articles of this show, okay? And of course, there are several other junior research fellowships, project positions, and PhD position calls open. So as and when these calls are out, 
our volunteers post that in uh, Facebook group, our uh, Young Academy of India's Facebook group. And if you are interested to post your uh, opening, your welcome, I will definitely approve it. We will approve it. Okay. So that's it for the month of September. And I wish you let the month of September be full of curiosity. Stay open. Be childlike curiosity, your good friend throughout the month. So I will see you again soon with yet another episode of exciting curiosity driven news for the month of October. Right? See you soon. Until then, goodbye and please take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. Bye.